we talked about social media, we talked about which social media is more effective. You know about this. You share video, you share photos, you share infographics. Okay, so it's really more for the public. It's really more for making your story known to, to, a, a, um, to a bigger crowd of people. So one tool you can use is the note, the Facebook note. It's like a blog post but it's inside Facebook, okay? So it can work. Um, earlier, we said uh, you can get a link from your website, post it on your Facebook page, and then share it. You can do that, okay? But uh, sometimes it can be much more effective if you use the same content, place it on Facebook note, more people will get to see it. My only issue with that is I would rather that people go to my website. I would like to direct traffic to my website. So I can use Facebook note, but I have to make sure I place a link on the Facebook note and drive them to my website. Okay? We, we can talk about Twitter if you want. Um, it is a totally different framework than Facebook. Facebook is a you know, you're building a community. Twitter has the nature of something like a broadcast. And people get to know about you and they, uh, they, they request to be part of your, of your crowd. And you're limited to 140 characters. So if you can tell your story in 140 characters, it can work. I never really taken to Twitter, unfortunately. Um, some people swear by it, but I think it's a generation thing. <laughs> um, so if you want to explore different channels, you can do so. You can go Twitter, you can go um, Instagram. If in your project you take a lot of photos, Instagram may be a good option. You can create a whole different community on Instagram as well. Okay. Okay. If you, if you, if it so happens that you get picked up by the media, make sure you make it known. Okay. Uh, when you're when you're reported on media, make sure you get that that link, put it on your blog post, put it on your Facebook page, make sure people know about it. And, you know, sometimes when, because there's an external endorsement, it increases your credibility. Your supporters will share it as well. Because they want, you know, they're, they're proud that, hey, the, the, the organization I'm supporting is on the media. So they, they'll, they'll push it as well. So I try very hard to make sure that I get picked up by the media or I partner with the media at the earliest possible time. I, try, I really try to do that. And, and I, I guess here's where uh, the wow factor comes in. The media is always looking for a great story. So if your project has a wow factor and you bring it out, the media can actually pick it up. You can, you can give unsolicited uh, uh, you know, press release to the media. If the, if the story of your project stands out from the rest, they can pick it up. They might even interview you. Okay? That's how the wow factor is so important. That's why I was emphasizing it at the start. Okay? Make, sure, make sure your project is standing, you know, several notches above everybody else in terms of the wow factor. Um, we will end with this. Okay, this will be my last slide. I will have to mention this, crowdfunding, because in your arsenal of fundraising tools, this can be powerful, okay? You can do away with this, actually, but if you decide to do something like this, if, if, if you want to go crowdfunding, 
it has its own unique uh, uh, it, it has its peculiarities that you have to be aware of okay so crowdfunding is what we are actually doing when we ask money from uh, friends family so our project blessed child is actually a crowdfunding project we are asking for you know a relatively small amount of money 500 bucks from a, a significant number of people to to fund the project so that's crowdfunding what certain guys did was set up a an online tool to make crowdfunding easier because everything is there okay the social aspect is there the the the, the fund collection mechanism is there okay you don't have to set it up anymore they will do it for you and uh, they will also teach you how to do certain things how to maximize the impact of your or the effectiveness of your of your campaign okay you you, you can you can be uh, uh, how do you call it um, it's like a tra your trainer reels if you want to learn how to do crowdfunding this your is your trainer reels <laughs> if you don't have the capacity to do it yourself you can try it out uh, you, you go uh, Kickstarter uh, although Kickstarter is partial to creative projects um, music, uh, books, uh, painting, film, uh, things like that. Okay, um, if you have a project like that, then maybe Kickstarter is something to think about. Indiegogo.com is more, more open. You can do any kind of fundraising activity there. I have hospital bills to pay. I can't pay it. I put it up on Indiegogo. Maybe my friends will see it. I can get funded. Okay, it can be as stupid as um, I, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, uh, you know doing a a, a project of uh, you know just staring into space for 550 days, and I need to be funded. And you know there are people crazy enough to fund a crazy project like that. So if you're thinking crazy, you can go Indiegogo. But there are other legitimate projects that you can do. Um, you can go Indiegogo. There, there are differences between Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And basically, the, the, the difference is with Kickstarter, it's, a, it's an all or nothing proposition. Which means, if you say you're raising 10,000 US dollars within a certain time limit, if you don't hit 10,000 dollars, you don't get it. Okay, that's how it works. Where does the money go? Um, well, the, the way it goes is, if I am a donor, I, own, I want to make sure that the project succeeds. If you're not able to raise a fund, I don't get deducted from my, my credit card. So I want to support only a project that will succeed. And that increases the chances that the project will succeed because if you meet your financial target. If you only meet 90%, your project is underfunded, it may, it may fail. So they, you know, they close up, they, they, they close the project, and my money is still with me. Okay. With Indiegogo, if I support a project, whether they get funded fully or not, I get deducted. It, it has more advantages for the fundraiser. GoFundMe is the same, but Indiegogo is bigger. Um, since this is a social tool, a social media tool, the bigger the community, the more beneficial for you. If you go for the smaller, uh, smaller uh, um, uh, crowdfunding sites, they have a smaller group of people supporting it, you may not be able to really meet your, your target. So Indiegogo may be the bigger site for you. Um, if you are more effective in promoting your site, then regardless of whether you go GoFundMe or Indiegogo, you, you, can, you can raise your funds. But if you can do that, you don't need them. <laughs> you, you, you say it up yourself on social media, on your website, you can do it all by yourself. Okay? So this is like, you know, fundraising on trainer wheels. You, 
you, you don't know how to do it yourself, so can, can you help me out? You set it up on a crowdfunding site. Okay? We will not go deep into this. We, we can, but we don't have the time. <laughs> okay? In the end, as I said, the social media is just a means to an end. If you have the right elements to make the project viral, to make the project spread, if it resonates in the hearts of people, it will certainly resonate online. Okay? So you just provide it a social media platform so that it will expand its reach beyond, uh, uh, beyond what we can do on a face-to-face -face basis. <laughs>